Welcome back everyone to our webinar here about uh, the uh, special topic trading in high and uh, low volatility. Obviously we, obviously we will assess and find out different market conditions which lead us to make different decisions. If the markets move a lot we have to kind of make decisions how we trade this accordingly and uh, really position ourselves in the market. If the markets don't move much of course uh, we will really find out and check on how we can adjust our position sizing as well. And to sum that up, uh, the session today will be pretty much lightweight, not so much difficult stuff to understand and some easy hands-on ideas on how we can really make use of different um, uh, market uh, situations. First of all, we have to find out, of course, what volatility really is, what it means and how this one can of course be measured also, how we find out how we find a, a big or less volatile market conditions in order to participate in today's markets. And of course, which has to do also with time frames. We can really use different time frames when we kind of really assess that volatility is higher or lower. Also, that's what we are going to, uh, to analyze today. And of course, as well, a few proven strategies which work in any market condition. Of course, guys, if you have any questions, just let me know. Please also give me some feedback if you can hear me right. There's a big filter room, which obviously is kind of interesting that you guys are seemingly interested in our sessions, what we have to offer here. So please, quick feedback here from the ones Lisa, Patrick, Rabia, Regine, Robert, Peter, everyone who is here with us, Daniel, oh, still people are logging in, which is cool, Efren, now the Daniel, Audrey, Andrew, great to have you guys around. Frank here also joining us. Guys, feedback please. Can you hear me all right? So we can get going and start our session here uh, accordingly. Hello, hello. One, two, one, two. Yeah, Patrick says yes. All right, let's move uh, to the MetaTrader platform and uh, find out here on how we can measure volatility, how we can find uh, uh, ideas. Let me actually open another uh, window, open a new window here for our um, Firefox window so we can swap back and forth here. Should work out exactly. We'll use this and then we'll attack a check on the uh, website here. First of all, before we move to uh, to the Meta Trader platform, Trading View. I like this platform. The charting pattern is pretty cool. There's a free uh, version which you can basically just use. There's the paid version. It's not really cheap. The paid version not really needed. I'll just have my basic watch list and um, of course quite a few interesting and important setups here. Stocks which I have here and also quite a few indices here. We have to find out also, of course what we really volatility is. Volatility is the difference in a time frame or actually in a market movement here, comparing the market which might move in one day a little bit on another day a lot. We also can potentially see, okay, how much in context based in the past is the euro dollar, for example, the euro dollar the currency pair moving. And this one basically say in contrast to the Bitcoin market, which is hugely volatile. Usually you can get really measure or you do measure of volatility in percentage points. You can see if you're just uh, moving here in different charts, uh, uh, that's the price difference. For example, 47,000 here was uh, a Bitcoin trading at uh, about just a day and a half ago. And now we are trading at uh, 54,000. So the percentage difference, which is quite a lot of difference comparing it to the Euro, say the Euro has uh, recently in the recent, uh, say uh, a similar time frame traded from just the 121.15 down to the 120.60 area. So a far lesser important, the lesser market momentum, lesser movement means in this case, percentage-wise, as you would say so, the uh, rule of thumb or the, the idea, of course, if markets move in less volatile environment, then you have a different trading opportunity, you trade different time frames. Uh, the volatility basically means how much the market moves and how much the market varies from one time frame to the other or from one and from one day to the other and hence of course you really should uh, really uh, calculate this and move uh, the markets accordingly. Uh, how do we measure it here? And uh, that's uh, that's the uh, the number uh, one idea, of course. First of all, when we have to understand also what volatility really means for us. Maybe also when I'm uh, moving on to the second step, how we measure volatility, you will also understand what volatility really is and what does it mean for you and your portfolio. Uh, how do we measure it? There's a basic idea, of course, and I'm happily sending it over to you. There's an indicator which I've copied here into my 
indicator windows it's called the um, uh, it's called the ATR lines here basically I'm just dragging it on my uh, chart and then it appears as these horizontal lines this one indicates also what the 121 area area here shows from a recent high point uh, towards a recent low point which of course in general means that the market has moved uh, from 121 to 20 that's what will move likely which is the expected uh, idea here at least for the day uh, for the trading day today 121 20 as a maximum high potentially at least and then we have the 120 area as a 120 20 area as a predicted maximum low which of course in this case would mean or would, would not only show us that the market could fall further it just doesn't mean that the market falls but if the market falls then this might mean that uh, further market momentum uh, to the to the downside really could be interesting for us here to make use of in this case we would say okay this is kind of somehow as a support and that shows you also like based off the market momentum here in the recent couple of trading days and weeks depending on the time frame you can see that uh, at this area the market is likely not falling anyhow further why just because the market is likely going to be overextended at this area up here the market is likely not going to rise further just because it might be overextended at the uh, recent uh, resistance area that's one thing which we can see and we can measure this volatility also in uh, expected pips you can see the central number 903 pipettes which would be in 90 pips so the expected trading volatile range for the trading day would potentially be 90 pips now of course this doesn't mean that the market really trades also this low or this high but it gives you a feedback also where the market might move to if you're looking at this also in the uh, in the uh, a Bitcoin market, which is much volatile, higher volatility, of course, here in cryptos, where we would say, okay, the volatility to the upside would be potentially at a max uh, 56,000 value and 51,000. So it's like uh, it's like actually a 10% volatility here per day, you would say. And if you just uh, uh, talk about it in percentage points, you could really calculate it based off. Uh, based off these extreme high to the extreme low number here and in the euro dollar currency pair you can expect how high the volatility is if you uh, if you uh, uh, if you use the, the high 120 110 and 120 20 uh, in this case right so that's the pretty much basic idea so you can see just uh, based off these uh, these numbers alone here that's a very basic indicator which, uh, which I'm happily sharing with you guys, as I said. Um, uh, just put a yes here in the comments and I'm sending you the indicator over after the webinar. So let's get going further here with the volatility and the market momentum potentially. The euro, as I said, potentially not really moving so much. Then we can compare it potentially here with our, where do we have it, silver market. Let's also take the uh, hourly chart. It's not about, uh, of course, getting any trades going here, but let's have a look on the hourly chart. We can see here on the hourly chart uh, that we have predictably uh, also the 2660 area here on the upside and the 2560 area. So basically like a, a rough a dollar of a movement here, if you multiply it and uh, check the percentage, you can see also that uh, the volatility, of course, uh, in this case here regarding the silver market is much higher than the uh, euro dollar currency market. It's much lower than the uh, than the, uh, the Bitcoin market. And of course, it's also a bit higher uh, comparing it to gold. The volatility in gold is not that high as well at the moment. The market is just uh, pretty much uh, not as volatile as uh, we would call it. And hence, you would maybe say, good, if you would like to uh, trade the market accordingly, let's have a look here on what we can see in the, the, uh, in the gold market. You can see the max high would be 1796 the max low 1760 so it's a bit of a 30 bucks 30 dollars a market movement potentially which you could expect here and the idea of course around this and why we talk about it volatility in charting time frames is something how we would potentially move on further in our portfolio now we should also talk about volatility and measure not only the volatility in a certain asset class it sounds a bit complicated but it's not where you would say okay the euro dollar is moving maybe not that much that um, that tells you of course that you might really trade a higher volume uh, a higher volume trade 
for example, you just put a trade on uh, um, at, uh, at, uh, at some point here, you say you have a buy, buy stop order above the market high at 120.75. That means you could, for example, uh, take a bit of a, uh, a higher a higher trading volume here, like three, four contracts potentially uh, based off your stop loss. Say you enter here, put your stop loss down here, and you put your take profit up to this area, you would understand that in this case, uh, your position size would be somehow bigger comparing the same position size in Bitcoin. If you would trade the Bitcoin market, one would place a buy stop um, at this area, uh, trading the markets towards um, higher highs. It doesn't mean where else, where, where you place your stop loss or you take profit, but it means, of course, if you would use the same position size in Bitcoin, the market would swing bigger. That would mean also that your profit or potential loss would be, of course, much higher, which means in this case, you should reduce your position size in order to have the same risk per trade. My rule of thumb as a beginner, maybe two, maybe 3% of maximum loss. For example, you place here a contract on a Bitcoin, then you really kind of need to reduce your contract uh, a little bit, smaller position size, or you would simply bring your stop loss closer to the entry area in order not to lose too much. Should the market not go in your in your favor, should the market, for example, they go into the uh, stop loss direction, which in this case means also that, of course, you would, uh, would uh, not lose too much in order to participate here in the trading market, which is also why some of us I know, for example, you don't trade the gold market. The gold market seemingly uh, higher increments, higher position sizes. For example, right now, just place a trade, for example, here, just now place a stop loss down here uh, or see to the, to the, to the, at this lower area. Keep in mind that the market might, of course, fall today to this area. That's at least the expected extreme low value, which means based off these recent moves in the recent couple of days or weeks, in general, the market might really go as low as this area based off the recent momentum moves, which means if uh, your account, and that's the actual stop loss, if your account uh, is um, executing the uh, stop loss here, you would you would have lost 150 euro. If your account is only like say 1,500 euro in a volume, that would mean you would have lost 10% 10% of, uh, uh, of your value, which is, of course, far too much. So we'd need to have a, a much bigger account in order to trade the gold market and be able to participate in this market in order not to lose uh, too much. And there's another volatility which you can measure. How is the uh, volatility also of your portfolio? Some traders, and especially fund managers, that's now getting a bit more on the professional side, would also ask the question, how volatile is your portfolio? Which means, how likely is your portfolio uh, losing, say, 5%, 10%, 20%, or maybe even 40% in value? How likely is your portfolio potentially increasing value of 10, 20, 30, or 50%? Professional traders know exactly where they and how they perform, and hence they can just exactly pinpoint on based on the past, how many trades they can win, how many trades they can lose, and then exactly they can position, they can they can scale their position sizes right on the sweet spot that they would that they will that they would never lose uh, more than than uh, than than uh, they they can lose in their portfolio or in their of their capital in order to still have enough cushion in their portfolio to grow substantially or not at least lose too much because there's at some point also the chances only when you lose or when you have lost too much based off your risk strategy you would mean of course in the end that you your portfolio might be in danger of losing too much value uh, based on of course uh, based off the uh, based off your uh, your analysis and based off your recent strategy Volatility and charting timeframes is another story, which uh, in this case means that uh, the different markets move to uh, different uh, different areas, of course, uh, which uh, in this case tell you, okay, if the markets, say, don't move a lot, you could place it a bit differently. If you see the market at the moment here doesn't move much on the hourly chart, we can see, and that's now, of course, a bit of a technical analysis here. You can see the market is just moving in a sideways pattern. You can see you have a high point here, a low point here, Simply, you just can go to a different time frame. You can just say, okay, I'll trade the market of the 15-minute chart, and now the trade appears a bit differently because now the same trade, when you're trading it off these uh, momentum areas here, would mean you place your stop loss just based on the low, and now your, your, your risk becomes obviously somehow less, and you can, in this case, increase 
your position size, increase your position size, and uh, the position size then uh, would mean that uh, you could potentially place a higher trade, right? So you can place a higher volume if this is uh, what you're doing here right now, instead of like uh, 10, uh, 0.1 contracts, you can potentially place the same risk, you can kind of do like four, five times, uh, five times the same amount, uh, uh, sorry, uh, four times the same uh, position size here in order to have the same risk, say 150 uh, euro as the previous example, which means by just trading a different time frame, looking at similar ideas in the chart, you would have the ability to kind of really make use of slower moving markets. For this one, we should step a bit further away from the uh, from uh, the current market. We should have a look on the dollar against the Japanese yen, which tends to move a bit less in volume. Also, we're looking at the uh, hourly chart. We can see also uh, here that uh, the market from the high to the low is just uh, say 80 pips, usually even a bit lower. Also, at the moment, the euro dollar currency pair doesn't move so much, so it's not really. A perfect example, let's have a look on the pound, if the pound moves a bit more at the moment, which tends to use, uh, tends to move a bit further, 130 pips, there you go. So that's the average to range, let's see, um, the ATR uh, really from the high to the low, which uh, expected high to the expected low, which would uh, coincide here, which would coincide with volatility movement here, which uh, we could uh, potentially then uh, use too in order to find out on how much the market would move and this means also the pound moves considerably more than the euro which means also you should really adjust your position size accordingly you should really decrease your position size a bit if you would lose uh, or if you would use the same trading idea the same trading setup based of course on recent high and low values but this alone just tells you if this market moves 130 pips potentially per day and the uh, for example the dollar against the Japanese yen uh, uh, only moves uh, potentially 80 pips per day. Let's have a look on the euro pound, likely also moves a bit less. Let's see how this goes. 84 pips, okay, quite similar. Also, the euro pound is like a less moving, less volatile currency pair. We can also keep an eye on the dollar against the Canadian dollar. Also quite interesting because it also tends to be like a bit of a sleeping pill pattern, also not really big volatile market, which uh, which does not tend to move also a lot. So let's see here. Let's see if my uh, analysis is correct. 130 pips at the moment also. Okay, at the moment, the dollar cat moves a bit a lot uh, more. Uh, not, not quite unusual. Why is this happening? Just simply because we see the oil market is uh, uh, gaining some sort of traction Recently, yesterday, the oil market moved lower as we expected, now started to move higher. So that also means that the volatility somehow increases the, the way of uh, a movement from the low to the upside, from the down to the upside, increases a bit. And with this also, the dollar, Canadian dollar currency pair moves a bit more. If you're looking at long-term trends, though, the market is pretty much in a rather sideways pattern. And with this also, you have times where markets move, uh, uh, move more. And that's what I said with charting time frames. You have uh, markets timings when the markets move a little bit more than uh, in other times. As I said, usually the pound US dollar, the silver market, the euro dollar to some extent, and also other markets move a bit more. Of course, crypto markets in general tend to have high volatility. You can see it if you're looking at uh, coin market cap, for example, in this case, if you're looking at coin market cap, uh, um, you can see how much the market changes per day. That's in percentage points, you see, 24 hours percent change. That's 3% for Bitcoin. It's not, that might not sound like a lot, but at some days, some points here, Ripple at the moment moved 18, roughly 18% 18 higher in the last 24 hours, which is, of course, quite a lot. If you're looking at the currency market here, like how much euro dollar moves per day, you can see that this is just not moving much, that the percentage change per uh, currency pair, for any given FX pair, is much lower comparing it, for example, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, precious metals market, uh, uh, sorry, comparing it to the, to the crypto market. If you're looking at the precious metals market at the moment, for a fact also, say silver has a volatility of like 15, 20%, which is uh, much higher, of course, than the FX market, but still much lower on average than the crypto market, which tends to move much higher. So with this alone and these percentage values, you can really see like how big you should plan your position size 
for example, in the cryptos market, you should kind of really play a much, a much a higher position based based on the volatility. If you have a current, if you have a, an asset which moves less, but if you would, have, for example, trade the wave market here, and you can see, okay, uh, based off uh, of this market movement, say from whatever twelve, thirteen dollar um, price here, the market moved like fifteen dollar, moved like forty five percent towards the twenty dollar area. You can see that uh, that you should really adjust your position accordingly so that's all for the currency market now we should look also on something for the stock market which works a bit different but on the stock market you get also some sort of interesting momentum here when you're looking in terms of volatility because there's an index for the stock market alone or different stock markets especially different indices alone for the s p 500 it's called the vix the volatility index which also tells you if the market moves lower if the index moves lower, we tend to have less more market momentum in the S&P 500. If the market tends to move more, you can see this, the VXN is the, um, the NASDAQ, uh, is the volatility based on the NASDAQ. And that basically also tells you, and uh, looking back here in history to last year, that's what we should do right now, Let's have a look on the Nasdaq. Last year, also, the Nasdaq really went much more to the downside also. That's basically this sell-off area here. The market went from 9,600 roughly to that to the 7,900 6, area. So much lower, uh, of course, in during this time frame, which, uh, which tells you that in this case, the volatility for the stock market is giving you some sort of an insight here and also on how the market might move. Because increased volatility in the in the in the stock market here at least for the vxn for example in comparison from 18 towards the 40 50 60 or even 80 level here given this time frame tells you that stock markets rather fall so that's something interesting because uh, of course market participants are really uh, 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 selling uh, selling their stocks uh, selling their indices at the moment of course we know that the indice trading and the so-called etf trading which, by the way, you can also trade here for us uh, or here with us at BD Swiss um, uh, at, uh, at our meter trader, the direct market MT5, the DMA, uh, uh, DMA account, where you can see also for the S&P 500, for example, the market was at a high of 3,300, went lower towards the 2,200 area. During the same time frame, also, the volatility index, the VXN, was increasing, was increasing a lot, which means if you see on the volatility chart here, that volatility increases the likelihood of stock markets falling is pretty much there. And that's what you can say and use, of course, say, aha, uh, market participants are getting a bit more uh, uh, nervous, they're getting a bit more cautious in their approach. If the stock market is falling, that might might mean that the volatility in in index is increasing. And with the rising volatility index, we have the information, of course, that we might see, okay, if this one is basically going through the roof, we are still at some volatile times, the markets might fall further, and that's something which you can easily use and say, okay, volatility increasing is helping me to digest me and see and check my portfolio. Obviously, as a professional trader, for example, you would say, okay, you use maybe options to hedge your portfolio. That's an advanced strategy, which is sometimes not a bad idea, but of course it comes at a price. Options pricing, to be a quick, give you a quick insight on this, options uh, pricing or options prices for options turn pricier than volatility is high because the likelihood of an, of an option to be, uh, to be expiring worthless or to be in the money, as you would call it, so that you can use and play your option to, to uh, make money. Basically, say you have, a, uh, you, have a, uh, uh, you have the S&P 500 or you have a few stocks which you've bought from the S&P 500, the markets turn up, everything is great, you make money with your, uh, with, your, with your stocks, with your shares in your portfolio. If, for example, the stock market starts to fall, basically by uh, really checking the, um, the S&P 500 uh, VIX index here, you can see, okay, you would maybe say, okay, you buy some puts, which means you make money when the markets fall. That was a strategy which worked quite nicely uh, also last year when lots of market participants saw this coming. They bought put options. The markets were falling lower. The more the markets were falling, the more their put options turned in the money were actually uh, generating money for them. Basically, they lost money with their stocks, the stocks they kept in their portfolio. On the option side, when the market turned lower, they were offsetting some losses 
on their stocks and still when the markets turned lower and maybe potentially corrected again here or started to move higher again they were closing their options or they were selling their options back executing their options and then making money with this on the other hand so that's a that's a different idea and that's a different strategy now we are moving on further also towards some proven strategies for any market condition of course the stock market a bit different I'm not the biggest stock market expert, but the underlying facts, of course, are pretty easy because they work similarly in the stock market and in the currency market. And of course, as well, to complement this, uh, this part of the story, volatility and options also work on the FX market. You also can play options, uh, FX, uh, plain vanilla options, barrier options, lots of different options, uh, which is uh, like a complex field here. But basically for us here, for uh, as a rule of thumb, basically the idea when volatility increases the market momentum increases right any precious metals silver gold other currencies if they move more that means you should really adjust your position size if they move less you should really increase your position size in order to participate because nothing is more boring than a market which stays sideways you have a very small position nothing moves here and you of course cannot participate in this market by any chance but if the market shows you that these values are kind of quite a quite a, a far away from one side to the other that means you might need to uh, use a small, slightly smaller position size based of course on what you can see here uh, based on the atr indicator and based on uh, the uh, the uh, uh, based on the volatility in the market that's basically my first part of the session here and uh, of course another idea also would be that you really increase and check your portfolio based on of course the market momentum which is a uh, Another uh, question here right now. Of course, you can simply say, okay, you just ignore these. Um, uh, you just ignore these um, uh, these barriers. You ignore these uh, high points or these uh, low points. Predictably, of course, there's market times also where the markets have moved just a little bit during a certain time frame. I would need to check if there's any such example here at the moment. I think what I have in mind, dollar Swissy usually not moving a lot. Let's see if we can find something. Sometimes we have these. Uh, sometimes you have these uh, these lines very close together, right? So that the market is only uh, trading in very tight ranges, and then you have the market basically exploding to one side or the other, and then you're getting a bit stuck based off this 70 pips. Sometimes it's happening just based, of course, on the market. If the market stays in a sideways range, that's a bit the problem here, of course. If the market stays in a sideways range, not moving any how much most of the times after a sideways movement basically here the market was falling and then kind of increasing in value a slight bit and then boom volatility increases and then instead of moving from down here to up here 16 20 15 pips whatsoever during one such time frame the market moves from the upside to the downside which is 80 pips and during these times uh, usually uh, 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 traders usually capitalizing on their option side because options are kind of cheap to buy or also to sell but when the market moves a lot then the options pricing changes because the market momentum the volatility is showing some increased momentum and hence obviously of course that this would really change also your adjustment in the portfolio so how do you do it and how do you take a proven strategy then for any market condition that's to sum it up here for the day the basic idea is also the long um, the, the long short approach i would say so basically you look, look at the market and kind of really check first where is the long-term trend is there any long-term trend can i see the market moving somewhere where i can get further insights what's the monthly chart for example telling us uh, on the on the euro dollar currency pair now we're moving to the end of the month we're here today on the tuesday 27th of april markets have been falling recently and now this month last month we've been falling this month we've been kind of increasing value a lot again to the upside obviously the euro is uh, gaining some sort of momentum but everything which goes up in one month also towards the end of the month quite often see some profit taking that's what we can use then uh, as some information then let's have a look on the weekly chart the market rising the last three weeks in a row basically that's what we can see here right uh, four weeks down last month four weeks basically up that's this month and uh, we can see like how much is the likelihood that the market turns on higher maybe not that much so what's the uh, idea then on the daily chart we have on the daily chart the market starting to fall a bit we have then on the four hourly chart the market to fall a little bit and then okay now we can see that the market here would give us a resistance based off 
the ATR level, which is the average true range, which sits at 121.20. One strategy could be, for example, to say, okay, I put my stop loss somehow a bit higher. I enter the market maybe right now. Why right now? Because based off what we've talked about just now, the market towards the end of the month could really see a profit taking, face profit taking towards the lower levels at, as an idea. Why this? Simply because traders which are trading the markets of the monthly or weekly chart, they would see this and would say, okay, we've been rising a lot this month towards the end. Recent couple of days also have shown the market was again rising a little bit. Maybe this means the market might see profit taking uh, because after some of them might have traded the market here, might have bought, waiting all the way for the market to gain momentum here. Now it's end of the month, really. Usually in the last two or last one and a half trading days, sometimes also only the last hours of, uh, of the market cycle, usually in the US session, then the market might reverse direction. So that's something to keep in mind here. But also sometimes we have the same happening over a couple of trading days where the markets have gained momentum for like two and three three and a half, roughly four weeks for the month. And then the remaining two, three days, the market see profit taking seemingly just because uh, profits for banks, for hedge funds are only generated once positions are closed. The mark to market measurement usually means that also traders would like to realize their profits, which means they have to close their position. When they close their position, they act in the opposite direction, which means everyone who had bought the market gaining momentum, making money, 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 all the way up, but the money is being realized only when they close their position, which means the people who have bought down here need to sell up here. If they sell up here, the market likely reverses and finds a, finds a weaker momentum. The market goes lower down, and this is what we could potentially use here to see, okay, long, long, short approach, monthly chart, we've been going higher, a week also suggesting the market might fall a bit further. And this means also the lower the time frame we check will play around important areas. And important areas could be the ATR here, might be retested if we put the stop loss a bit higher, entry right now, uh, take profit down here, which would confirm, okay, maybe the trend changes a bit direction towards the end of the month. That would be one of my expectations. And based off this interesting levels here, support, support, support we've been trading higher and now we are testing this area and if the market really does not gain momentum again to the upside we might see and that's the sweet spot here kind of soon the market might fall further and if the market starts falling we might soon quickly see a drop to the downside which would confirm then the market heading to the downside here kind of really entering our trade uh, with a break of 120 what is it 120 the 60 120 50 area when the market really respects the, this level not any further but keeps falling we could place this market based off the long-term approach to the short term and even shorter term approach of course you can also play just uh, off this level here to make it shorter term approach and that's what you decide as a trader if you would like to trade intraday you could also look on the hourly chart you could also even look on the 15 or five minute chart and play the market accordingly knowing that the daily chart is up the trend is your friend the market might continue higher there will be the opposite approach where you say okay if the hourly chart gives me some sort of feedback maybe we see this right so given the trend say this area uh, might have been this area here. You might say, okay, the market is falling, finding support. Maybe you also analyze the moving average here. The, uh, the moving average as just a median price uh, range here. The market's been falling. If the market starts to gain momentum again, we might see a continuation to the upside, which would be the other idea here potentially to see that this technically makes sense as well and that you can analyze the market accordingly also. All right, that's my session here for the day. I hope that um, these things make sense for you. Patrick is asking, um, Frank likes to, hi Frank, the ATA and NTR indicator, uh, he would like to get a first, Frank, send ich dir rüber. Uh, Patrick, uh, können wir den ATR auch uh, Support and Resistance Lines nutzen? Um, ja, können wir auch, Patrick. Ich mache das gleiche Webinar ja am Donnerstag in deutscher Sprache, dann würde ich gerne am Donnerstag hier in deutscher Sprache die Themen nochmal die, oder eure Fragen weiterhin beantworten. The answer or the question from Patrick was today, could be used the ATR indicator uh, also as support and resistance line? Yes, that also makes sense. Uh, somehow, uh, technically, everything which you analyze really makes sense, medium to long term. Just, uh, of course, the basic idea here for me today is uh, to show you guys that uh, different markets timeframes cause different uh, volatile market momentum, right? So one thing, of course, uh, 
which we could also use, we could also use a look at, uh, at the economic calendar. For example, you have an interest rate decision, the euro dollar likely moves more, you have maybe non-farm payrolls, the dollar against the Japanese yen moves more, so on and so forth. You have maybe market news like yesterday, Tesla shares lost momentum. Why? Because they didn't sell as many cars as expected. So the Tesla share price lost momentum as, uh, as of course, the valuation for the company might be reduced and so on. So those are important market news, of course, which you can use in order to, to find out where and how much the markets might move. And on the other hand, of course, if there's no news, you could see maybe, okay, you can capitalize maybe on something where you have a feeling the market might head to. For example, you believe that Tesla shares might have lost some momentum recently, but in general, the future is looking good for Tesla. You might be buying Tesla shares. Uh, so that's the, the opposite approach potentially. But in general, the idea, of course, that the market around well, uh, doing different and important news events moves maybe more than others. And for example, also the oil market. The oil market, of course, moves more when there's like OPEC movement, where there's like certain developments, certain ideas in the market coming. And hence also, of course, um, a corresponding currency pairs are moving more. But yes, important stuff, uh, support and resistance lines also um, uh, are kind of giving you a further, of course, insights here in the market. Lucas, how to use the COT, Commitment of Traders Report? Uh, that's something interesting also. Uh, for the Commitment of Traders Report, it's a bit of a different story. So the COT report, which you can get from the from the Futures and Exchange Commission uh, in the US, this report comes out once every week, basically, for the previous week. So numbers you'll get are a bit of like outdated to one hand, on one hand, but on the COT report, usually the way at least how I look at it is that you, you compare the retail traders, so-called non-reportable positions, against the professional traders and check out how one side plays the market comparing to the other side, which is a different story and it doesn't have anything to do with the volatility here, Lucas, but it gives you, of course, how much on one side are one hand of the, of the market participants invested comparing it to the other, to the other part, to the, giving you the insights on how retail traders are invested comparing it to professional traders, where you can also see once they're extremely biased to one side or the other and they're not on the same page, basically, let's say, for example, Professional traders are extremely long in the euro dollar, uh, but retail traders are already short in the euro dollar. It has to do with the underlying reporting of positions. That means the euro dollar might really change direction because basically also small traders, uh, retail traders are moving rather in line with the market momentum, whereas professional traders are kind of really rather single-sided onto one side of the coin. You can use this again also to base your, your positioning for yourself, but not really in terms of uh, of volatility. Guys, that's my session today. I hope you've had fun. So volatility basically means how much are the markets, how much is one asset class moving, how much is it moving, is it moving from one cent to one cent ten or to 90 cents basically down from one cent or is it maybe rather moving like the crypto markets currently from one cent or from one dollar, let's start with the dollar, from one dollar to two dollars or four dollars. Higher volatility means bigger price swings, bigger price swings means of course, we have to take smaller position sizes. That's a rule of thumb, of course, in general. And we measure volatility in the stock market in percentage, technically currency markets also the same, or of course, in actual values, actual dollar or cent values. And then, of course, we can just change the charting timeframes. If the markets move a lot, we'd rather trade the daily or the weekly chart. Let's have a look again here on the euro dollar currency pair. Let's see what's going on here. If the weekly chart gives you certain kind of a pin bars, for example, on the weekly chart, you can see we have a falling trend. And it's, it started from this way, from this way here. Kind of this market was down, was up again, was down again, down again, up, up, and then market moved up and down again. And up to this year, this is like a big impact candle to sell the market further. Such a big candle of the weekly chart tells me I would like to trade the market of the weekly chart and be, uh, be a participant here in falling prices, which is then what I do in this case would have worked nicely here to see falling prices. The same can also work on the daily chart. If you have, uh, or on the four hour chart, for example, also you can see you have even on the hourly chart, you have like something, a bit of a sitting here next in the office next to the church, bit of noisy background here, but there's also time to end the session here with a gong. 
Um, if you have falling prices here uh, based on the hourly chart, you can see also the same story, pin but to the upside, you want to sell thereafter, participate in the falling market price, the same story. And of course, this really means that higher volatility means you, you trade rather longer term chart, lower volatility, you move it at least for the currency markets, you change and trade rather the shorter time frames here in order to participate correctly. Proven strategies, we talked about, I think, in detail. Question-wise, I hope I've answered everything. Of course, for the ones who have said here, uh, I would follow up with this uh, thereafter and I'll, I will send the ATR indicator over to you. Guys, happy trading, getting back here to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot for tuning in here at BD Swiss. See you later. Bye-bye.